والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم The battle of Uhud is officially over. The Prophet ﷺ instructed his companions to bury the dead, the martyrs, at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal. At first, the companions took the dead ones to bury them in Medina. And while they were in the middle of the way, the Prophet sent uh, his messenger to call them back to be buried in Uhud. And this is the Sunnah, where whenever a person dies, he is to be buried where he dies, especially in the battlefield. And among those who were buried was Abdullah ibn Haram, the father of the famous companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Jabir ibn Abdullah. He was buried along with his brother-in-law, Amr ibn Jamuh. And subhanAllah, and this is a miracle and a sign from Allah Azza wa Usually, usually the trend is whoever dies after a year, earth dissolves their bodies and it's all gone. This is nature. Jabir ibn Abdullah tells us that after approximately 30 years of the Battle of Uhud, or 36 years, there came a flood that revealed some of the graves in Uhud. So Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan, who was the, khal the, the Khalifa, the Caliph at the time, sent to them that redirect and, and, and relocate the graves of your loved ones who were buried in Uhud. So Jabir went, he dug out his father and his uncle who was married to his aunt. And when he dug them out, they were as if they died yesterday. Nothing the, has changed. The body them. is still the same. Everything the was still the same to the extent that he says that my father had his hand over one of his wounds. And when I removed his hand, it was, you know, still moving. It's yeah. not stiff like a dead man. And it started bleeding again. This is unbelievable. But this is what took place and happened. And this is a sign from Allah. Now, this is not the norm with all who die in a, a battlefield, in, in, in jihad. But this was a sign from Allah and a karama, something to honor these people yeah. with. And of course, it would bring comfort to Jabir ibn Abdullah. We were told that the Prophet ﷺ comforted Jabir and his aunt because his aunt was crying when they brought Jabir. And the Prophet ﷺ told uh, uh, his aunt, cry or don't cry. It's up to you. He was given the shade with the wings of the angels till he was resurrected. That is his soul. So don't be afraid. This man is in paradise. And he also comforted uh, uh, Jabir by saying, Jabir, your father, Allah Azza wa Jal, brought him and asked him, O oh, my servant, wish. Wish whatever you want to wish. Make a wish. So Abdullah ibn Haram, what was his wish, you think? What do you think he wished? Money? To come back to the yes. Lord, yeah. He wished, Oh Allah, I wish to come back and fight at your side so I can, I can die again and again and again. Allah Azza wa said, Well, 
I've already ordained this, preordained this before that no one dies and come ba comes back to life. Sheikh, are we allowed to cry upon our uh, dead brothers? Well, crying is a natural thing. This was done by the Prophet Sallallahu When one of his grandsons died and he had him, he held him in his, ha his arms and he started crying. And also when his son, Abraham, who had less than two years old, he was less than two years old, his mother was Maria, the Coptic, that was yeah. given to the Prophet Sallallahu by the Mokokos of Egypt. When he also died, the Prophet Sallallahu cried. And one of the companions objected by saying, Prophet of Allah وسلم, you cry? The Prophet says وسلم, that this is the mercy of Allah. And whoever Allah takes the mercy from his heart is, is not a normal human being. So crying is allowed. What's not allowed is to shout and scream and to behave as if you are not uh, accepting the ruling of Allah. Some women would, tore, would, would tear their, their clothes or pull their hair or slam their faces or shout. All of this is a major, all of this is considered in Islam as a major sin. And a Muslim is not allowed to do this. Yes, Abdullah. Yeah, I was just going to comment on the same th similar thing. There are groups which use the Islamic label and they slash their faces and put blood on their faces when people die. Yeah, this is completely against Islam. Because whenever you want to label a group, you have to put this group to know if, if it's an Islamic group or un-Islamic. You, you have to put this group through the acid test. And our acid test is the Quran and the Sunnah. So if anyone claims to be mourning the dead one, the dead uh, uh, loved ones by slashing their faces or hitting their heads and backs with chains and swords and, and bleeding and considering this to be form of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal, let's see the origin of this. Does it exist in the Quran and the Sunnah or the actions of the companions? If it does not, then definitely this is an innovation and a fabrication on Islam. It has nothing to do with our religion. Abdullah ibn Haram was a great companion of the Prophet ﷺ who died at the cause of Allah and wished to come back to fight at the site uh, uh, or in the, uh, for, the, for the sake of Allah. But Allah told him that this was already preordained that those who die do not come back to life. And this brings us to another issue. Is Jesus Christ dead? Because if he's dead, then Allah Azza preordained that the dead are not to be sent alive. The answer would be, no, he's not dead. We believe that Jesus Christ did not die, peace be upon him, and that he was resurrected alive to the heavens and he is awaiting the time where Allah Azza would allow him to come and descend to earth. And he would not bring a new message. He would rule with the message and the laws of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Going on, after all of this took place, now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions are in their wounds. Yet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them to stand behind him, face the Qibla, and start supplicating. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood in front of them and he started supplicating and the things that he said are so strong in Arabic I might find difficulty in translating it into English but I may give it a try he started by praising Allah and saying oh Allah all praise is due to you you Allah no one can give what you withhold and no one can withhold what you give and no one can guide whom you set astray and no one can set astray whom you guide no one can 
bring close what you put far mm -hmm. and no one can, can put far what you brought close oh Allah grant us your blessing your forgiveness your mercy and your provision oh Allah I ask you to give us the enjoyment on the hereafter that does not turn away from us and does not change O oh Allah I seek the enjoyment on the day of poverty and that is the day of judgment where when everybody is poor nobody owns anything who can dare and say I'm a rich man I'm a powerful man Allah Azza wa Jal holds everybody in front and says I am the king I am the owner who has the final word Allah. who has the kingdom behind uh, uh, under his uh, 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 possession and power and no one dares to answer to answer because it's only Allah on the day, day of judgment so he's asking Allah Azza wa Jal for the enjoyment on the day of poverty he's and he says oh Allah I ask you the security on the day that people fear Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of the things that you've blessed us with. And I also seek refuge in you from the things that you've prevented us from having. Oh Allah, beautify faith and belief in our hearts and make us love it. And make us also hate blasphemy and make us hate sins and disobedience O oh Allah make us among the sane and the wise O oh Allah let us live Muslims and submitting our will to your will and also let us die as Muslims submitting our will to your will and make us catch up with the righteous on the day of judgment without being ashamed and without being tested O oh Allah, have your wrath and anger over the disbelievers who disbelieve your messengers and who reject people from your path and way and have your wrath and punishment on the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians who also fight Against the justice Islam. and fight Islam. Beautiful Words. supplication in their wounds, nothing but supplicating to the Almighty. I believe we have a short break. Stay tuned, and inshallah, we will be right back. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. Look at our problems here. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God.